Vulnerable beings comes from the perception that uh, both humans, non-humans, and their environments are in a very specific condition, and it's in a condition of vulnerability. But this condition should be embraced. This uh, condition should be recognized as important to create a new way of coexistence between humans, non-humans, and their environments. One of the main references for our thinking about vulnerability is the work of Judith Butler. Uh, after 9-11, uh, Judith Butler has written quite extensively uh, precisely about this topic and the way that vulnerability can be something that can be reclaimed in a political way. So once we realize and we are aware that we are all vulnerable, then this can create a space for collective action. And it's also important, and that's something that she argues very convincingly, that to understand that not everyone is equally vulnerable. Certain bodies and certain groups are more vulnerable than others. My research starts in 2013, uh, looking at infectious disease and architecture and landscape. And this is something that Ivan, of course, has been looking at as well from, since many years. So for us, this really is the culmination of a much longer project that begins before COVID. And it's important for us to stress that Vulnerable Beings is not a project about the current pandemic. It's a project that tries to ask much bigger questions. And so our research was really the basis from which to begin in order to have a broader perspective on infection and contagion. And so our research allowed us to gain a historical and geographical depth that will inform the discussions that we're going to have. But we have to think that this research is not only focused on an academic level or in the university, or in our research, that it is mostly scientific. But uh, it's actually a recognition of other disciplines, other languages, other narratives, that uh, could actually allow us to understand the uh, times that we are living in right now, from artistic experiences, from the point of view of activists, from the point of view of uh, politicians, filmmakers, uh, performers, uh, even musicians, that actually could allow us to understand and to coexist in a very different uh, uh, world. We have to think that the current pandemic of uh, COVID-19 has not been the only one or has not been uh, unprecedented. Uh, we have been uh, looking at uh, pandemics that have been affected human beings and also non-humans for uh, the last uh, two centuries in the uh, contemporary terms. And that we have to think that these pandemics have been affecting different communities and different geographies in many different ways. And uh, actually have to do precisely with geopolitical uh, uh, regimes, with uh, different economic uh, circumstances, but also even with the definition of what a human or what health uh, could be. And we have to redefine all of this. We have to uh, take a look at it and take a look at uh, scientific uh, certainties, but also the creation or even the definition of what a community is and try to also find other ways of coexistence. One of the recurring themes throughout the program will be the HIV AIDS pandemic, which is good to remind ourselves it's an ongoing pandemic, it's not over yet. And this is something that, of course, Ivan has been doing a lot of research on. If you consider that particular pandemic, the HIV AIDS pandemic, you see that on the one hand, specific groups and subjects were completely marginalized and excluded from public visibility. On the other hand, new forms of community and new ways of being together emerge from that condition. And so that's something that we are really interested in. So to kind of understand what kind of forms of community emerge and how that can be like a way indeed to reclaim a situation of this kind. And also recognize that there are many other uh, pandemics happening all over the world. Uh, of course, Andrea was talking uh, about HIV AIDS, but we have to think on cholera, on Ebola, or uh, even like recent examples of Zika, Lyme, uh, and many others that uh, had been affecting other parts of the world.
The program was envisioned with the idea of an assembly. And we mean this very literally. So an assembly is a, a space in which people can come together, physically, of course. So we are lucky for this to happen in the real world and not uh, on Zoom. This is, of course, uh, extremely important to the program. So first of all, this project is intended as a moment to convene, to reconvene together after everything that has happened in the last year and a half. And so to be together physically, literally in the same space is extremely important. In the second place, what we want to do is, what we want to achieve is this sense of attuning to different voices and to different histories. So kind of literally like kind of tuning the knob of the radio towards voices and stories that may have been a little bit forgotten or may have been a little bit obscured. And we are hoping that these acts of being together, of assembling uh, and of attuning can be ways toward a collective healing after what we have been all going through. We think, we have to think also that there are different ways of approaching not only pandemics or uh, vulnerabilities or even uh, what a community is, uh, there is not a proper language to talk about uh, uh, all of these uh, topics, but many different ones. And we want to uh, recognize them as such, from artistic experiences to scientific knowledge, from a political point of view to uh, activist uh, positions. So for us, it was actually uh, in, quite important to have a program that could gravitate from one discipline to the other one and to find actually ways uh, of uh, common grounds where uh, all of these uh, different agents could coexist and could discuss.